This is a continuation of the previous uh, video. There are uh, three, four more accounts that we need to look at and then we will summarize. So the account that we now have is creditors account. The creditors are the vendors or the suppliers of the business suppliers and uh, the idea is that you know business you know based upon the going concern principle you continue you expect the business to continue for a long period of time and therefore your vendors and suppliers supply goods to you and you can pay them after a lag after a certain period of time so when that happens uh, a new account is created it's called creditors account the creditors may have a name so you may have uh, for example, uh, so the vendors could be ABC Limited. This is one of the vendors. You have another XYZ Limited, another vendor, and you owe them, you know, different uh, amounts. Uh, so these collectively, these vendors are going to be called creditors. Okay, they can be one creditor. They can be uh, tens of creditors as well. So the creditor, uh, again, let's understand the nature now. Let's say there are two businesses. This is this is your business, and this is your vendor. The vendor is going to supply goods to the business, and the business is either going to pay in cash. But I'm saying uh, the business. Let's assume business does not pay in cash right now. Therefore, there is going to be a new liability which is going to get created. The business has to now pay this vendor at some point. Let's say after two months. So there is a new liability, new liability which has been created and the name of the liability is creditors, creditors. Now this is a liability and the rule for liability, uh, liabilities is that, that all the liabilities are, are categorized as personal accounts. <clears throat> now you could have the name of the creditor. Uh, here as as well it could be called xyz uh, limiteds limiteds account but then you will have to ask you know who is xyz is this our supplier is this our buyer uh, you need more uh, information to decide which type of account it should be uh, therefore you know for simplicity we, we've said creditors but in you know assignment questions or otherwise if you have been given a name then you have to figure out whether this is a supplier uh, is this a vendor and if it is then you know it's a liability for the business and hence it should be a personal account then you have uh, outstanding expenses okay what are outstanding expenses in one of the earlier slides i talked about uh, uh, financial year 2020-2021 so this is March so in the earlier slides I talked about uh, expenses for a given year you may pay for six months let's say this is the first six months and this is the second six months and you assume any expense let us say these are salaries outstanding expenses and expenses could be salaries this could be rent, this could be telephone bill, this could be electricity, any expense for that matter. As long as it is outstanding and I am I'm trying to explain to you what does outstanding mean. So for six months, let's say uh, we were saying this is salaries. So salaries, let's say 100 into 6, 600 has been paid. All right. And 100 into 6 remaining 600 is unpaid okay and right now you are standing here in April 2021 the next financial year has already begun and you have paid half of the salaries for the past year and half of the salaries have not been paid for the past year okay this is what is called outstanding outstanding uh, as against you know general English language meaning which is uh, uh, you are an outstanding student for example uh, that has a different meaning but another connotation another meaning in uh, English language only is also that uh, this is something which needs to be paid by the business 
so in the language of accounting uh, the word outstanding is used to refer to the expenses which are overdue so and let me write overdue here so outstanding can be thought of as overdue the last date has gone by and you have received the services uh, so again let me write it you have received the benefit or the services against this expense but you did not pay for it now salaries were to be paid to staff they have rendered their services to the business they can go to the code of law sue the company and demand the payment of salaries so that is the idea the company has a liability so if we want to again look at this infographic the employees provide services to the business and in return the company has to pay salaries when salaries are not paid then salaries are outstanding and when salaries are outstanding they represent a liability the liability that the business has towards the employees and when it is a liability it's a personal account it's a personal account understand the difference between uh, the first uh, 600 that has been paid the first 600 which has been paid in cash is your expense the remaining 600 which has not been paid in cash which is overdue becomes your uh, liability uh, going forward however one important point which you must notice is that according to matching principle and according to accrual principle we have to while calculating the profit for a given year you have to match the expenses of a year to the incomes of a year so the total expense in this financial year let me write it here total expense is 1200 regardless of whether you have paid it or not it has become due the expense for the year is so total expense for the year is 1200 actually the expense which was paid is 600 and the outstanding expense is the remaining 600 this uh, this 600 becomes a liability this 1200 becomes the total expense that you show in the income statement while calculating the profit and this paid 600 this reduces the cash balance that you have all right more on that when we you know get into these topics a little bit more but i'm also using this tutorial to introduce you to various dynamics uh, of these uh, you know transactions these accounts and how to think about these uh, you know as we move along okay let's move on you have interest earned on deposits so this is business depositing money in the bank so deposit is let us say in the bank and you have earned clearly this is an income all right now interest that you earn interest is not an operating income the only the only operating income that a business has is from the sale of goods and services right so the only operating only operating income is from the sales of either goods or services okay g and s are not standard short forms but for lack of space i just wrote it here now interest therefore clearly is a non operating income regardless of you know uh, regardless of whether it is a operating income or non operating it is an income it is a nominal account nominal account now another uh, discussion on this depending upon the nature of business for a furniture trading business furniture trading corporation right the furniture trading corporation has additional cash let me say this is bank this is business business so the business has extra cash they deposit this in the bank and bank pays an 
interest of 100 uh, 10 that will be too much interest otherwise okay so bank pays interest this is a furniture trading corporation and you have uh, an income which is non operating in nature because your primary activity was uh, you know manufacturing trading the furniture buying and selling the furniture however if you are talking about a bank if this is a uh, SBI SBI bank corporation for example that's not the correct name so SBI banks main business what is SBI's main business main business is to take deposits right and lend money loans right so the main it does not produce any other uh, goods the services that are lent uh, you take deposit and you pay interest on it you lend money to people and you earn interest on it okay so for a bank the interest that is earned on the loans is actually operating income because that is the primary uh, activity it's not a finance cost this is operating income so again i'm emphasizing that uh, uh, you should look at the purpose of the business you should look at uh, what the business is doing on day to day basis, what are the primary activities in order to decide whether uh, an item, whether an account should be uh, operating or non-operating in nature. Okay, let's move forward. Okay, we are done with all the um, various different types of accounts that, that I want to look at. Uh, you see a list of the accounts that we have gone through uh, in the first column and then you have the type and then you have the category. The point I want to want to drive home is as follows. If you see all the assets, all the assets are categorized as a real account. So all assets are real account. If you know this is, I mean, empirically we are now proving it by looking at various items. All assets, real account. Next, you see all the expenses and incomes and losses. Here, all expenses and losses and incomes and gains are nominal accounts. And the third category which is left is liabilities. All liabilities are personal accounts. There could be, you know, further uh, personal accounts uh, can be uh, representative personal account as well. But regardless, if it is a liability, it is going to be a personal account. All right, so this is the learning from uh, this video and the video before this. Uh, these three rules are going to help us. Uh, these are the building blocks for us to understand the double entry system, which we will learn in the following videos. Using this categorization, we will be able to write the transactions in the first book of entry called uh, journal. So more, more on that uh, in the following videos. I, I see you in the next video.